through. So it's actually a, a modification, but it's still the concept of awareness of thought. That was the key, lucidity of awareness. Sensory awareness is awareness of present flow of sensory input of one's own location, including but not limited to light, smell, temperature, sound, the senses. Locational awareness is awareness of the physical conditions of one's own present location, including the presence of other life and the presence of any real or potential dangers. There's peril again. We're built to, to react to peril, to, to impending danger. That's why they abuse that, because it is built into our being. It's built into who and what we are as an organism. Um, momentary awareness is awareness of the changing conditions uh, of any of the things that we see in our location. Contextual awareness is awareness of how one came to be where we are, including the path of arrival and important decisions that led us to that moment. So an example of that is animals that find themselves trapped will remember the way they came and remember things about that path and will react accordingly. There is a awareness of contextual knowledge that, that mammals certainly seem to possess as a key part of survival. Situational awareness is awareness of the present situation and subject, including the ability to process all previous data and try to predict the present intentions of immediate high order life forms. So our brains and our wiring is constantly measuring and testing the environment. Are we still safe? Is it still okay? And you can see that when you're dealing with animals in the wild. They're constantly processing information. You can see that about is the conditions going to present a, a threat and they react accordingly. And the last is hypothetical awareness, being awareness of all previous information, including the present situation, the assumed motives and conditions of the present situation, and calculating possible outcomes. Now you notice in all of this we didn't describe other elements of the mind, we didn't describe intent, we didn't describe the subconscious, we didn't describe the unconscious, we just described conscious. And what is apparent, I hope you see, as we're going through this, is that despite of all the magnificent work and the books and the writing, when it comes to mind, it's a mess. Our knowledge and our explanation of it is a mess. I'll give you a classic example now when we talk about mind of just how messy it is when we actually get to the physical aspects of the mind. Now one of the great tricks of medicine is in the use and abuse of two words, neuron and nerve. Now most people realize that their body is full of nerves and most people accept that their brain is full of neurons. Now in saying that, most of you and most of us, and in fact I did too until I started to, to read this, considered that our mind, our brain, started from the neck up and that the rest was nerves, the way down. Two wholly separate things. Well, what does the word neuron mean? Well, the word uh, neuron is ancient Greek and it means nerve. <laughs> it means nerve. And what does nerve mean? Well, nerve comes from Latin nervus and it means nerve and neuron. <laughs> so, medical science, bless his heart, in, in what it loves to do, divide and conquer, has convinced us has controlled our mind, has imaged us to believe that our mind is separate from the body. Our body and our brain are separate. When in fact, a neuron is a nerve, a nerve is a neuron, they're the same damn thing, and our mind and our brain is our body. Our whole body. Nerves and neurons are the same thing. They've just convinced us they're different. Brilliant. Another brilliant piece of medical disinformation. But what's more, we talk about one, we're told that we have one brain. 
one brain. Well, in actual fact, we have three. And in fact, medical science knows we have three. They know we have three, but the way they separate it, and it's again an art of trickery by them, is that they call them nervous systems and they don't connect the, the information to the brain. So we have, say we have one brain, but three nervous systems. Well, the brain is a system. We have a central nervous system. We have an autonom autonomic nervous system, and we have a peripheral nervous system. They know we have three nervous systems. Now, think about it. In nature, is nature prone to waste? particularly when it comes to knowledge and information processing. Is nature like some errant cook? Does it just leave the pans around, let the food rot, doesn't care? Or does nature show the kind of precision that is necessary to sustain life over millions and hundreds of millions of years? Well, I'm being rhetorical. And of course, the answer is that when it comes to DNA, nature truly shows a brilliance and a care to which we are still ourselves coming to realize and even coming to appreciate. We've got a long way to go to designing things as brilliant as the design of DNA. And the ability to write and read DNA where the biological systems have been proven are so accurate that in three and a half, three point four billion bases, which is the average number of bases of DNA that is held in the genome of uh, a homo sapien, and, and most mammals are about 3.3 .3 billion. Within that vast number of, of information, the error rate is 0.000001%. A fraction is ever of error is ever created in the transcription of DNA. If there's an error, it is from some external source, like retroviruses, like some poisoning, like some breakdown of the DNA through radiation or some other external force. It is not through the natural transcriptions. So with that in mind, is nature prone to waste? when we talk about three nervous systems, because if we, we were designing the body, as in fact our scientists design bodies today in robotics, they design it with one system, not three. Well, I put it to you, and certainly from the research that has been done, and you can go and read the journey of UCA, you don't have one brain, you have three brains. Three brains for three neural networks, central, autonomic, peripheral. And what do we call those brains and what are those brains? Well, your primary brain, your oldest brain, is not the brain in your skull. It is your spine. And in Eukadia, we call that the cyto, C-Y-T-O, the cyto system. It's your primary neural network or your central nervous system. Your second brain, and this is the brain that you inherited in your design because that is what nature learned, how to develop a second brain in simple uh, life forms, in insects and other uh, life forms of that class of simple life form, is your orgo brain. It's your um, endocrine system. It's the cerebellum at the back of your brain, so the back of your cortex there, that's your orgo, the second neural network and organs. And we call it the autonomic nervous system. And your third brain, your youngest brain, your most recent brain, is your cogno. We call that cogno. And it's your cognitive, and it's the cerebrum, or peripheral nervous system. So... Uh, with your uh, attached to the sensory. So they have three brains, three nervous systems, all working together, allowing us the ability 
to think and perceive while the rest of our body, the rest of our brain systems operate. Well, why has psychology not cared about this? Why has medicine not taken it further when clearly they know that these elements are there? Orthodoxy has prevented them. But then what, what happens when you start to open people's mind up to what their mind is physically and how their body is structured? That there is three parts, physical parts, connected. And by the way, there are three parts of the physical. We've described three parts of the mind, haven't we? Conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. I haven't described subconscious, and I haven't described unconscious. There's a three there as well. Well, you don't control mind by educating people. You control mind by fear, by disinformation, by keeping you constantly unbalanced. You eliminate those things through education. So it makes sense why medicine, with all its claims of advance, does not want us to know or has not come to the logical conclusion that there are three brains with three nervous systems operating in harmony that is the modern homo sapien model. Well, we define the uh, three systems of mind as the consciousness, which we call the, because of awareness, we call it the unique collective consciousness. Or, and I think you'll love the acronym, UCC. <laughs> the unique collective consciousness. And we define the collection, which we'll be exploring further, and, and this will be part of the cognitive law that you see up on the site to review. And I want to wait until you can see this, because then you can read it, and you can ask questions about it, and you can debate it with us. But the second is the unique uh, collective subconscious, which we call the UCS. And the UCS um, is very much connected to the um, orgo system, and the unique collective consciousness is very much connected to the cyto system. And then the third is the unique collective unconscious, the UCU. And it is connected to the cyto system. So the three of those, when combined, create the unique collective awareness of mind. It creates you. Now, how does this match up to our friend uh, Sigmund? and his tools developed to take advantage of young women many, many years ago. Well, he had id, ego, and superego, or the two, or the three, I should say, the three that he developed. Well, id is equivalent to the instinctive unconscious, the unique collective of unconscious. The ego, or say the superego, I should say, is the moralistic, the subconscious, which is the unique collective of subconscious and the ego is the structured conscious which is a unique collective of conscious so the psych the id the ego the superego being the unique collective unconscious the ucu the, the unique collective subconscious the ucs and the unique collective conscious the ucc equals the mind equals unique collective awareness and that is the same description that we describe as the dreamer of everything, the absolute, the one, the dreamer of the dream, which we call Eukadia, unique collective awareness of Dia, being the symbols of meaning. So we are literally a model of the creator in our design. No wonder they fill our mind full of disinformation to manipulate, to hobble, to corrupt, to reduce, to enslave. Well, even though we've run out of time in this first hour, I hope you see in just the few insights that I shared with you on cognitive law, how important the introduction of cognitive law